Greetings everyone, this is Rock Moss Black Knight, Trump Filter, installment of the 100 Bullets Retro Review Series. Brings us to Volume 11, Once Upon a Crime. Oof. Where we left off... Part, elements of both the Trust and the Minutemen were consolidating. Benito Medici had gone to Mexico in search of Dizzy Cordova, as had Mr. Branch. Which is where we pick up Mexico with Branch and, and Medici after a cockfight. Both of them discussing which, which birds they're going to back. We then cut to Lana, Lupe, Jimmy, and Victor, who are in a motel, well, enjoying themselves. And in Dallas, another head of another, the head of yet another family of the trust is retired by Cole and Remy. In Mexico, Dizzy and Wiley talk about various things. Shepard killing their experiences. While Graves meets with Cole and Remy about what's next. Wiley, however, decides to make a call, giving calling up Graves. Graves insists that the Minutemen need Wiley. Wiley knows that, in fact, that no, it's not him they need, but rather Dizzy. Another brief flashback to uh, pre Atlantic City days. And Victor has gotten a call. From Wiley. He's got. Wiley is, sit, is sitting on the one who killed Shepard. So, Lano. Lano calls. I guess it's Medi Medici, but gets Megan Dietrich instead. <laughs> Giving himself an update. Meanwhile, his crew burned down the gas station they're at. Meanwhile, Graves, Remy, and Burns are on their way to Mexico. With Victor giving the passing along intel to from Wiley to Lano and company about Dizzy. The three old school Minutemen basically tell tell Loop a bit about Shepard. We get more of a, more flashbacks to the Atlantic City job. And with the lead up to it.
Wiley and uh, Branch discuss Wiley's phone call with Graves. And Wiley begins the plan. Wiley then calls his uh, former his uh, one of his contacts, Coochie. And well, turns out Graves called called Coochie. Wants Coochie to do something. And, well, Wiley can't match match Graves, so Wiley kills Coochie and his men. Wiley then calls Graves and explains that Coochie's dead and asks who's next. Dizzy, Benito, and, and Branch bury the bodies in the desert. While Lono and company arrive in the nearby town. Arranging for three for three rooms as one of them will be sitting will be sitting watch in the lobby in case there's a visitor. Victor volunteers with the first shift. We then flash back to Wiley and Graves, Wiley, Graves, and Shepard discussing the Atlantic City job that led to the end of the Minutemen. And we, further, we see more of the actual final job. We learn that. The Minuteman's final, the Minuteman's final action was the death of Roland Dietrich. Wiley and Dizzy have a chat. Well, Jackie goes down to, to relieve Vic, only to discover that Vic is gone. Which, of course. Pisses off Lano to no end. Dizzy and Wiley continue their talk. When Vic arrives. Alone. Figuring that Wiley might... That Wiley might could use a friend. So, a few things are then explained. And a lot of questions are raised. For example, why is Augustus Medici's son alive and hanging out freely with a Minuteman, a source of information on the Minuteman and the Trust, and a Minuteman-to-be? Also, it's explained that, well... Lano and his crew know where Wiley is, so yeah. Wiley goes to enact the plan he set up, leaving Victor, Benito, Dizzy, or Dizzy and Branch to wait for Lano and company. Various, uh, Victor's just kind of, well, Victor. He doesn't really care. He's just... Meanwhile, Wiley meets with, uh, Grave. With... Goes to meet with Graves. However, it's not Graves who comes to talk, but rather Cole and Remy. The two talk with, uh... You know, Wiley basically wanting to talk to Cole and Remy alone, not Graves. While talking, Wiley reaches a, he just reaches for his jacket for something when Remy shoots him square in the chest, killing him. As Wiley dies, he sees his late his late lover Rose, 
Suffice to say, Graves is not happy. Back with Victor and Branch. There another chicken fight. While Lano, Lupe, and Jackie discover Benito knocked out, courtesy of the skull ring that Victor took. Also, the three of them, or the two of them, all have Izzy. Have Dizzy. They go to hide out. Branch is still unsure how long he's going to survive all of this when Graves, Remy, and Burns, and Cole Burns show up. Graves is not in a happy mood, obviously. Lono, Lono his crew, and Benito stop at an adult bookstore, buy a booth, And by a booth for video. Back with the Minutemen, the Graves asked that Dizzy be untied, as he wants to talk to her. And he then asks Cole, Vic, and Remy, who have all just heard Dizzy say that she's going to kill Graves, to wait outside. Back with Lano and company, we learned there's one thing that uh, that actually grosses out Lano. The reunited Minutemen are uh, picking at each other, basically. Vic insisting that uh, there's no way Wiley was drawing on Cole because if, well, if Wiley was, Cole wouldn't be there. Vic then goes to talk more with, uh, with Branch and does not seem to talk entirely well. Meanwhile, the talk with Graves and Dizzy goes surprisingly better. That it wasn't Dizzy they were trying to... However, he it does it explain to Dizzy that it wasn't Dizzy's life that Shepard and Wiley were trying to protect, but rather Graves' life. <clears throat> Back at the adult bookstore, Lano questions Benito asking quite plainly why Benito isn't dead. Back with the Minutemen, Graves introduces the crew to their the newest Minuteman, Isabel Cordova. Branch tries to make his escape, but runs into Cole, who, said, who tells him that Branch should have gone to Italy when he had when Cole gave him the chance. Speaking of Italy, that's where the story then jumps to. Ronnie, Remy's brother, is attempting to get the painting from the stolen painting from Echo Lamorne. And I think New I think we're in New York now. Yeah. Um, it's a few a few days later. Graves and Di Graves and Dizzy are spending time together. Graves, 
I would say Graves is more than likely try. Though he says he's not trying to soften her up, but more towards him, but more, you know, explain himself. I think it's a little column A and a little column B. And we learn more, we learn about Shepard's past. Back with Ronnie, he's got the painting, but he's still trying to make his way to... We then get a flashback of him arriving before cutting to learning about Shepard's past. Apparently, when he was much younger, Shepard was a basketball player. A rather talented player, actually. A much younger Graves, as well as Mr. Hughes, Luke's father, meet with him. Asking about a murder. A local named Charlie Owens. Shepard claims not to know. Graves thinks he's lying through his teeth. Back in the present with... Well, almost present with Ronnie. Ronnie meets Echo. They discuss the painting, they discuss the fee, so on and so forth. We get more of Shepard's past. Before catching back up with Echo and Ronnie. The issue kind of goes back and forth between Echo and Ronnie in Shepard's past. Apparently, Graves and, and Mr. Hughes are well aware that the Shepard killed Charlie Owens, but they can't prove it. While making their way upstairs, Echo has gone ahead from Ronnie upstairs as Ronnie is limping due to a, is still kind of limping due to injuries he sustained while helping his brother, and is taking the stairs slowly. So Echo's gone ahead, and someone else goes after Echo. And well, Ronnie begins to think that yeah, he maybe either a he's been had or someone else is on the hook trying to get the painting from Echo. Which, is, which leads Ronnie to meet Claudio. Turns out Claudio also agreed to buy the painting from Echo. And so they realize they've both been played by Echo. So Claudio and... Uh, And Ronnie discuss, you know, what their their place and things. With Ronnie explains he's a collector, and well, Claudio explains he's a supplier, supplying the Japanese. Further explaining that if it's, if it's something for sale and someone else wants it, his employers have to have it. Ronnie and Claudio part ways, and Ronnie returns to his hotel to find Echo in bed waiting for him. She'd been worried. Shepard's origin uh, backstory jumps forward a few years after he re after returning from Vietnam. Well, Echo tells Ronnie just what happened when it came to the when it came to the painting. She's got it. It's you know it's safe, and she does intend for Ronnie to be the one that has paid paid for it.
Mr. Hughes and, Gra and Agent Graves once again talk to talk to Shepard. Really explaining that they'll be watching him. In Italy, Claudio and Ronnie have hooked back up and are trying to get the painting. Claudio gets double crossed. Claudio, double, Claudio, the two get double crossed, and seemingly Claudio is killed, with Ronnie having the painting and being at the end of several pistols. Ronnie makes a break for it, manages to hide. Turns out that uh, Ronnie's the one that got double crossed, not Claudio. It was all part of the game. It was all an act. But Ronnie manages to escape with the painting. Moore has learned about uh, about Shepard, namely that he uh, grew up in Hell's Kitchen. Um, also, information is given about Mr. Hughes explaining that. The Minutemen would never accept him as a. Or the Trust would never accept Mr. Hughes as a Minuteman. So he ended up having to train Minutemen. It made him. It did, he disliked it and eventually left. But the whole thing is that Graves intends to recruit Shepard. And it becomes fairly clear that uh, Charlie o Shepard did kill Charlie Owens. with a basketball. Eventually, Ronnie's able to get away from Claudio and his goons with an assist from Echo. However, as they try to escape, Ronnie asks a rather important question of, of Echo. How did Claudio know where he was supposed to meet her? Last thing we see, we see from that story, is Echo holding up a pistol. Back in the present with Grays and Dizzy, they arrive at a, at basketball, at a, at a basketball court, and... Graves, carrying his trademark attaché case, opens it and spreads Shepard's ashes. As they leave, as they leave the court, Dizzy de tells Graves that, or asks Graves if he realized that Shepard really didn't like jazz, and that is where Volume Eleven ends. That's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, rock, live long and rock hard.